So first of all, uh, thank you for having us uh, for such a great uh, opportunity for sharing our project, uh, Taka project, and its activity as titled as uh, Integrated Orchestration for VM-based 5 bgc and Continent-based RAN. So let's get started. Uh, sorry, uh, my name is Yasufumi Ogawa, and uh, Hiromu Asahina and Yuta Kazato from NTT, uh, which is one of the Japanese telecom company. So here is uh, the outline of uh, our today's session. First of all, uh, I would like to provide the overview of TACA project, and then life cycle management for VM-based 5 gc and continent-based RAN. Then we'd like to provide a demonstration, and finally a conclusion and uh, invite uh, forum session will uh, be uh, we are having uh, in uh, Thursday. So uh, the overview of the project. So what is Taka project? So Taka is an uh, official open stack project uh, building a, a generic VNF manager uh, for VNFM based on Etsy man, uh, management and orchestration architecture framework. So as described in the diagram, TACA is compliant. Uh, TACA is an implementation of compliant with uh, HNF standard. And TACA enables operators to deploy and uh, operate network services and virtual network functions on uh, NFV infrastructure platform, such as OpenStack or Kubernetes or so. And Taka community is now trying to contribute to uh, Oran SC, uh, which is the Oran Alliance working groups to create a, a working software solution to enable uh, open and intelligent 5G run, which is uh, our most interested area. And uh, this is the background of uh, today's uh, session. Uh, for 5 g network, including both uh, radio access network and core network, and orchestrate both CN and RAN in the same manner. And Etsy uh, uh, NFV defines uh, northbound interface service management for core, and ORAN defines uh, orchestration for RAN network. And for that, uh, TACA has been uh, developed as uh, HNFV standard uh, compliant VNF manager with uh, same uh, some feedbacks to the standard and uh, uh, has become a SML project of ORNC, uh, which means uh, we have uh, uh, having a relationship with such a standards, uh, getting feedback to implementation and uh, then uh, return back to some feedback to the uh, standards. And then, so I would like to more focusing on Etsy man architecture. So Etsy NFV defined uh, man architecture, which enables the network operator to uh, manage virtualized resources. And uh, this diagram is an uh, overview of the architecture. And the uh, right side hand is uh, described the MAN components, including NFVO, VNFM, and uh, uh, BIM. So Ooh. NFVO uh, is uh, for orchestration, and VNFM is a man, uh, resource manager, and BIM is an uh, infrastructure, uh, including OpenStack or Kubernetes. And the MAN components are connected by a standard interface, and they use the standard descriptor and uh, virtual images as VNF packages. And uh, this is the uh, TACA's role in uh, MANO. So TACA acts as a VNFM, uh, as uh, showed in the red box and uh, communicate with uh, HNV standard a uh, APIs, and attack and manage uh, life cycle of VNFM according to requests from VNF or NFVO. And attack enables operators to manage uh, virtual resources 
and the use of uh, various BIM and VNFL software supporting the Etsy uh, standard API. And here is a, a detail of uh, Taka's architecture. So the uh, original goal of Taka project was to implement uh, MANO features defined in NFV, uh, Etsy NFV. While we didn't uh, focus on the design because the standard was not much uh, enough uh, at that time, uh, which means the uh, component of Taka was not so uh, compliant with its NFV at that time. But now uh, we are uh, more focusing on uh, compliant with uh, its NFV uh, itself and uh, have tried to redesign focusing on the VNFV feature with uh, uh, defined in the its NFV standard. Uh, so uh, as uh, fine graded uh, architecture is uh, now uh, compliant with uh, its NFV standard itself, uh, be, uh, providing uh, its features via standardized uh, uh, REST APIs. Okay, next I will explain lifecycle management for a BM based to 5GC and container based RAM. Um, and in the requirement for TACA, so there are typical BNFM supporting use cases uh, such as EPC, 5GC, MEC, and RAM. And especially, uh, virtual, virtualized RAM is a target of, for the latest HNFV release five, and Taka covers a, a three standard interface uh, as a generic BNFM, uh, BNFM, uh, between BNFM and NFVO, uh, uh, between BNFM and BNF, and uh, between uh, BNFM and BIM as a standardized interface. And so, so we cover the, the following features such as a uh, uh, much BNF su uh, B, uh, BIM support and so on. And here is uh, an example of uh, BNF lifecycle management in Mano. And uh, TACA, uh, BNFM covers uh, day one and day two operations such as uh, configure BNF and runtime operations. And here is a, a new TACA feature for content based run. And TACA Z and Antelope Race uh, enhance, enhance key feature for content based run ahead of time. So there are four key features, uh, enhanced CNF, lifecycle management, monitoring and resilient, enhanced security, and Kubernetes support. So we will introduce some future in detail. In monitoring and resilient, TACA provides uh, autonomous scaling in out or hearing in their own lifecycle management. Uh, and to enhance uh, resiliency, TACA implements fault management and performance management interfaces for monitoring their resources compared with the Prometheus, a de facto standard monitoring tool. And here, and TACA provides a configuration function for uh, Prometheus and get alert from Prometheus and transfer uh, then to the alert of a standardized Etsy format. And next, Taka also implements some feature for security, uh, such uh, uh, for further use case for Etsy NFP, 3GPP, and commercial operations. Uh, OOS mutual TLS is one of the common security function methods 
recommended by HNFV and 3GPP. And we developed them working with uh, uh, OpenStack uh, Keystone project and cover OpenStack infrastructure uh, in this antelop cycle. And we also developing uh, access control, uh, API access resource control, and we extend the Oslo policy for the use case of the BNF LCM and commercial requirements. We can manage a uh, fine grade access control uh, by the user information and BNF information, such as a company, a uh, deployed area, and uh, tenant information. Um, and regarding uh, container-based run, so we have integrated BNFM into an ORAN software community. Yeah. ORAN software community is one of the Linux Foundation project and supported by ORA Alliance to reach the implementation of the ORAN specification in open source code. Attacker can manage a uh, network function deployment as a part of uh, DMS, uh, Deployment Managed Service Service. DMS is a current attacker scope for management in ORAN software community. And here is a uh, figure of ORAN architecture. ORAN architecture, oh, sorry. ORAN architecture uh, consists of a uh, service management and orchestration, SMO, and some radio units such as uh, RU, DU, and CU uh, on the awkward as an infrastructure. And standard, uh, standardized interface are uh, defined between each component. Uh, Taka now mainly contributes to uh, SMO and OCloud as a HNF based generic BNF and manage OCloud deployment manage service DMS via O2 interface uh, here. And Taka has contributed to ORAN SC see, from F release, and the latest release is a Z release now. Now, uh, working with Taka community, uh, Taka expands the scope of support in ORAN, and please kindly check uh, the latest document in uh, ORAN SC or our Taka project in OpenStack documents. Uh, in the in ORAN specification, so uh, ORAN clarification and orchestration specification uh, utilize the NFV specs. And now update auto DMS to refer to NFV so 002 and 003 are for NFVO and BNFM. Oh, sorry. And the current ORAN SC development aim to uh, achieve automation framework. So test code contribute to ORAN SC uh, based on the uh, NFV TST 0, 0, uh, 10 code uh, named robot framework. And now Taka as a generic BNFM is collaborating with Starling X as an O-Cloud to uh, demonstrate our technical uh, concept in ORSC2 in H release, and we still uh, we continue to uh, contribute uh, ORSC and OpenStack uh, for uh, further use case or uh, run use case. And then, so we will start the 5GC and run demonstration from Hiromu Asahina. Thank you, Kratos. Um, okay, um, like we said, uh, we have shown the uh, Turkey can handle the both 5 z 5ZC and their VRAM uh, in terms of LCM. So I'm gonna show you the uh, brief demonstration that the Turkey can handle both LCM for VLAN and uh, core network. and. Uh, this is the picture of our goal. Um, there are two infrastructure there. 
OpenStack and uh, OpenShift, um, it's not storing X, but uh, which means the target is not tightly bounded into um, storing X. And uh, Open, uh, Red Hat Open, OpenShift is uh, like an edge cloud here. And uh, OpenStack is act like a core network um, cloud, central cloud. And uh, there are two VNF packages, 35ZC and uh, UA Ransom. Unfortunately, there is no useful VR application nowadays, so we use UA Ransom, but uh, we can get uh, some clues to see the how Tucker handle the SEM for both VR and the core network from those two VNF packages. And uh, we will deploy these two VNF packages to uh, each infrastructure appropriate way. So let's get started. Like I said, it's a goal, and the answer situation is like this. There is no um, core network VLAN. First, we register a VNF packages for core network and instantiate it. Maybe it's a little bit small, but uh, now um, we are registering the OpenStack as a VIM so that we can deploy VNF package into that OpenStack. And uh, this is the VNF package content for 5CC. Then we up upload that packages. It looks easier. Yeah. And uh, it just uh, re registering the package. It's uh, just uh, uploading a uh, container image to content registry like that. So now create the VNF. Now we create the VNF for 35ZC. Um, the create is just registering the VNF package into Tucker DB. So that the Tucker can load that VNF package when instantiation happened. And now we, oh, it's failed, but there, now we instantiate that VNF packages, which means they're provisioning the 5ZC on OpenStack. And it accepted here. And uh, as it's open stack, so what happened here is uh, creating a uh, VM uh, on Nova, uh, as a Nova server. So we can see the, there is a stack created by heat. And the VM is launching in the background. So we can see the resources created, resources are created here. and the servers are created here. Right, so um, in the Turker view, it's a really simple way uh, to provision the 5ZC, just uploading the end package and just the running instantiation. And this is the created uh, VNF package information which uh, which has already instantiated. Okay, so let's check the 35ZC. It's working, actually. So it's working, and there is no UAs registered yet. Okay, so now we're gonna make a VRAM. It's a VRAM sim, like I said, but there. And uh, it's uh, um, composed as a Helm chart. So VNF package contains Helm chart. Tucker can handle, which means Tucker can handle both OpenStack hot heat template and the Helm chart in the same way. So this is the pa VNF package for UL1SIM. 
So maybe you can see the some Helm chart or acquired uh, task uh, template here. And uh, like we did uh, in the previous uh, step, we, uh, we're going to create the VN package first and uh, upload the contents to that VN package. So it's registered, upload it. So there are two packages. 5zc and uh, you will run sim, which is just uploaded. And uh, again, we gonna create VNF and instantiate it. And the point is the the operation described here are the same as the what we did. 5GC. So Tucker um, appropriately abstract the operation for both Helm chart and uh, Hot. Now we have instantiated UE1 SIM. You can see the state have been changed to instantiated. So let's check the Helm chart is successfully deployed. Yes, yeah, so we can see the UA1 SIM is available from Helm CLI and uh, also from OpenShift commands. So it's running. Okay, so we have deployed both 5ZC and the UE1 SIM. Now, time to register the UE2 uh, for 5ZC. And uh, try to ping from UE to 5ZC. So the status is connected. And uh, we're, we're going to attach to um, UE, which is running as a pod, and uh, pin to Gogo, uh, like we already did. Yeah, so it's, it's working. So let's scale out it. So scaling out. Uh, in here, in this example, we're gonna scaling out uh, uh, GNB, GNOB from Tucker. So first, check the current resources. It's not a scaled out. There's only one part. So let's scale out your own sim, Z not B. And it's just one command like instantiation, just uh, specifying the VNF ID and uh, sending a scale out request to Tucker. Then Tucker compared that request to the uh, scale out request for Helm and uh, yeah, successfully pods have been scaled out. Yeah, you can see the two pods for G not B. Okay, so let's terminate all the things. So termination is just termination. So we, what we have to do is just uh, running the termination commands to Tucker.
first terminate, um, which is this, 5CC, I guess. And uh, yeah, 45CC as well. So there's, we can see the status has been changed to not instantiated, which means it's successfully terminated. So let's check the, the resources are completely deleted from Helm CLI and uh, OpenStack CLI. We need to do this in the uh, actual situation, of course, but uh, in the, in, this is a demonstration, so we check the um, we check the resources are deleted from a CLI. So there is no resources. Yep. Okay, that's all. Thank you very much. And uh, sorry, <laughs> do, do you do you have to explain more for that last comment? Oh, okay, that's all. Thank you very much. And. Uh, Any question on the work comment? I'm Robert Huan. Uh, excuse me, one question related to the VNF. If you, if uh, we have a memory, if we have many different uh, uh, tenants with this form VF service chain. How do you deploy email for each tenant purpose? Thank you. Do you know the question? Because each tenant for, for me is uh, one tenant, he is the other tenant. Then we may use different VNF functions. So you have a different uh, service chain in the cloud. So how do you deploy the difference of the channel for each tenant. Thank you very much. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your question. Um, let me confirm that your question is how Turkle uh, realized the multi-tenancy, yeah, yeah. right? Um, Turkle support multi-tenancy in um, Kubernetes, for Kubernetes with namespace. So we can use namespace to split the tenant so what we have to do is just uh, putting their appropriate namespace when you instantiate the VNF. So you, by by doing that, you can split the service chain by namespaces. Different order. Okay. So, but but there. You you will if you will deploy that on the Kubernetes, you you can split um, them by uh, completely split them by a Kubernetes feature namespace. So I, I think it it's not work. Yes. You, you you have to use the same namespace for your deployment, and there uh, he have to use the his one. Okay. Yeah. Any other question? So if you want to do network policies, 
Um, is, are you able to leverage those through templating through Tacker to add those in? Because I'll have custom deployments in different for different customers or where I'm supporting them where they have potentially you know, a different firewall of automation that they need to integrate in or a different or a different uh, egress controller or ingress controller that we need to set up. Are you able to layer that stuff in through your Tacker deployment for the different namespaces or do you have to pre-set up your different namespaces outside of Tacker for the for on that multi-tenant flow? Oh, sorry, I, I, I don't get that. So assuming, Could you? assuming you have your multi-tenancy mm -hmm. and, you're, and you're leveraging that through different namespaces instead of just two, I've got 17 or 30 or 70, right? Um, each of those tenants has to have different um, controls placed around it for network connectivity and for also internal RBAC. Do you, is that done through Tacker or are you layering that in separately? It's layered separately today, yeah. Any other questions? Okay. So is oh. that? Okay. If there's no question, we wrap up this presentation. Thank you very much.